Hello, I'm Jude Scott, and I'd like to be able to paint along with you today, showing you Bird of Paradise from the garden. Gorgeous, vibrant flowers, full of colour and life, and very architectural in their structure. Beautiful to paint. I hope you enjoy it. Please join me. These beautiful flowers are easy to draw. They're very simple, lots of straight lines, but I've tried really hard to merge the colours so that you can see light and dark, warm and cool, and to be able to blend the colours together to get the magical qualities that they have in their petals. Um, here I've started, I've drawn up the flower and I've put the first washes down of Aurelian uh, and also Quinacridone gold. And I'm just doing the second layer now over the quinacridone gold and the aureolum. Um, I've dropped in water, as you can see, and there's quite sharp edges. So we'll paint over those, but they will still give you a bit of texture, a bit of visual texture to the petals um, and make it a little bit more interesting, I think, to have a look at. So I believe the trick to painting... Um, Bird of Paradise is to make sure you keep that lovely pale section where the petal goes, departs from the actual stem and soars upward. That is always very, very light in colour, very pale. So don't let your pigment come too close down to the main stem. So I put in very strong colour. This is permanent rose and aureolan yellow which make a beautiful orange and I'm just now painting a second layer over that first one and you can see I've left the pigment quite a way up the petal it's not close to the petal where it um, joins the stem so I've left a gap there so that you can just join the two you can join the petal to the main stem just with water and you get that wonderful glowing transparency that Bird of Paradise have with their petals. See, I'm just dragging it down now with just a little bit of water. I might leave that to dry for a moment because it's quite wet and if I join it too soon all that water and pigment will rush down to where I don't want it. So just make sure that you don't have to rush your painting. Now this petal here, I want that to recede into the painting. So to get that to have a three-dimensional look, it's got to be darker and cooler than the one in front. So I've used the same two colours and I've dropped a little bit of cobalt blue into that petal. And I'm now just painting that in just a slight gap there so you can see between the front petal and the one that's behind it. This is now a little bit drier. Maybe I'll leave it a moment longer to touch water to that and I'll go on to the next step. This is quite a long video so you can always turn down the sound and fast forward it to get a bit of speed painting happening if you want. But I think these steps will be easy to follow and the Bird of Paradise is such a beautiful flower to paint. It's, um, I'm lucky enough to have it growing in my garden so I can um, share it with you. The colours are just gorgeous. So here I've mixed up some cobalt blue and a little bit of Prussian blue and I'm going to paint those marvellous purple petals that bird of paradise have and I think it's really important here not to have a flat blue wash put down so I'm just going to use my rigger brush and drag that uh, out with water and you can see already that's broken up the flat blue of that petal so you want water to drag that up the paper for you and break up that flat wash of dark colour. Um, on the finished painting, if you do a close-up, you'll be able to see how that is quite, there's quite a variation in tone within that one colour, 
which you find in the actual petal when you look very closely at a bird of paradise if you have access to them. I don't know what part of the world you're painting in, but here in WA, in Western Australia, you can have pretty much most flowers growing in your garden, except ones that like a very cool climate. So again, I'm just adding to that, just very carefully. It's really important that you get just the right amount of pigment and the right amount of water on the paper. So you can see there I've got, like I always say, I've got light and dark and I've got warm and cool. Some of that purple is quite warm and some of it is quite cool. So where it's coolest, I've got uh, Prussian blue, which I'm now, you can see it, that's a very cold blue, which looks fantastic with the warm purple. And it adds some life to the petals. Okay, now we're going on, that little section there's finished, and I'm now going to start, oops, here's a close-up of, well, it was a close-up of the main picture. I'm still fine-tuning my um, video skills here, so please be kind, please be patient. But you should be able to get a, um, a screenshot of that original bird of paradise. I thought I'd actually left it, put a longer time delay so that you could see it for a lot longer but it's come and gone very quickly. So here I've dropped, um, this is for the main bud where the petals spring from um, and when you look really closely at them it's got a wonderful pink edge that's almost translucent and it fades to a a greenish purple color. So I've started with um, rose matter. I think I've said permanent rose, but I've started with rose matter and then I've put some cobalt with that. So I've got a lovely warm purple and now I'm mixing up a really strong green with um, Prussian blue and some quinacridone gold. Really, really dark and quite cool. So it'll be a wonderful foil in temperature against that warmth of the uppermost section of the main bud. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more warmth underneath in the yellow and drag that down with water. And because those pigments are all still very wet, they are merging together. If they're not merging together, you haven't got enough water. So try and keep it quite damp, um, shiny wet. If it's not shiny wet, you haven't got enough water on your paper and the pigments won't merge. They'll just sit there and look quite dull. You also need to be quite brave and not play around. Once you put it down on the paper, leave it there. Trust the paper, trust the water, trust the pigment. It will merge together and look beautiful. Please resist that urge to poke around with it with your brush. You don't need to do that. So on these Bird of Paradise, there's a lovely section of pink behind that main bud. And then the petal, the stem, sorry, goes dark green again. So don't rush this, just have the, it's crucial to have the right amount of pigment with the right amount of water. I'm just slightly merging the two and just making that a little bit fatter underneath. Constantly adjusting, as you can see, the amount of water that's on my brush. I'll make that a bit brighter. Don't forget your paper will dry and your paint will dry 
10 to 20% lighter if you use a lot of water, which I have. So it's got to be quite bright and quite strong. So I've got thick pigment, which is strong, and I can always dilute that with water. If I start out with it too light, too pale, I will never be able to get the strength back into it without playing around with the paper and then you start to lose it. You lose control. So I still haven't joined that main petal up there. So I've painted all that, the rest of the main stem, the blue petals and the main bud without touching that. It's just at the right stage now to connect the petal to the main section of the flower where the petals spring from. Now this is another purple petal which is tucked away there. That's why I've left that gap in between the orange because the purple I can't paint over the orange. It just wouldn't show up and it wouldn't look fresh if I did. I want these colours to look fresh and vibrant and alive when I'm finished. So just dropping some more stronger pigment in, touching it to the already wet paper. That petal there is completely dry, so I know that I'm not going to get the purple bleeding into the orange, which would give me a very dull grey. So I certainly don't want that on a bright, vibrant flower. So I put some Prussian blue into that, and you can see when I'm dragging that down with the petal with just water, you get that wonderful, cool variation of light and dark within that one set of petals. Then I'm going to add that second section of the bud in. And if at this time you feel that it's a little bit flat, just wait until the petal's almost dry and then you can just touch it with a little bit more water and it will push the pigment around on the paper and give you a wonderful um, cauliflower. Little tiny cauliflowers look brilliant in the right place. Flower petals really look brilliant with a little with a few cauliflowers in them. So in this petal here it can go back even further so I'm just putting a pale wash. I've put some of the purple back into the rose matter and I'm putting that over the back so now you can see that petal goes back behind the first one. You can just see in the bottom right hand corner there I'm holding the original flower in my hand and you can see how pink it is on the top of that main part of the flower. Just putting some creases in, they're quite crinkled up the petals. They're just putting in a few lines to replicate that look. As I've said, it's quite a long video, so if you feel at any stage, hit fast forward and turn off the volume, otherwise I'll probably sound like a chipmunk. And you can watch it at your own pace, um, as fast or as slow as you want. You might want to paint along and copy the moves. So if you want to do that, it'll take you about an hour and 20 minutes, I think, is the length of the video. So I do hope you enjoy it and it helps you with your flowers. Um, just making little marks that can add some vibrancy and life to your painting. You can see how underneath that main section, the main head of the petal, or sorry, the head of the flower, how that warm yellow has bled up into the main purple area. That is absolute magic, what I absolutely love about watercolour. You can't get that with any other medium. 
and if you had a close-up of the original painting you would see that it looks absolutely beautiful when you look at that magic on paper um, it looks like nothing else it's why I love watercolor it's brilliant so here I'm mixing up some more rose matter and a little bit of aureole and yellow and it makes a stunning red or if you put more yellow it makes a stunning orange so I hadn't tried rose matter in Holbein paints before but I bought a new tube the other day and I just love the rose matter um, I was using alizarin crimson before which I will continue to use but I think for this particular painting the rose matter makes just the perfect orange for me so I'm running out of room in my palette box there so I'll probably have to take out my cadmium red which I don't use very often but when I do it's crucial so I'll, I certainly use rose matter and alizarin crimson and I also bought quinacridone red not long ago which is a fabulous red it's bright it's vibrant and it's totally transparent and it again that also makes beautiful warm yellows and oranges and the quinacridone I found makes the most wonderful um, cauliflowers uh, I'm painting here on uh, a new paper for me it's called Lan Aquarelle it's 300 gram and it's hot pressed so you get very very sharp edges with your paper and you, it's very easy to get uh, cauliflowers and visual texture on your paper so now I'm going to paint down the stem uh, where the two areas of the stem overlap it has a little bit of color so this is a great um, way to paint the stems this is how I like to paint my stems so mixing up the green there I've used quinacridone gold and I've used Prussian blue and I've just painting that with water and just watch what happens when you touch a brush loaded up with some pigment into that and especially being hot pressed paper it leaves beautiful ragged edges on some of the marks with almost like a cloud like texture on the especially on this particular paper it's beautiful and now I'm just going to drop in some aureole and yellow because I want lots of color variations in these stems and this is just the pure orange that I've also used in the petals and it will give form like a three-dimensional look to that stem because we don't want it to look like it's being stamped on paper we want it to look like it's got form so this is the start of that stem and in the course of the project I'll be painting shadows over these um, I'll be painting other flowers over the top and underneath I'm just adjusting some pigment and color and paint with my brush dropping a bit of water in to that stem just use the very tip of your brush if you want to add water in or drop in some pigment don't sort of keep painting over and over the same section remember you're not painting the house you're just painting a flower that's on paper you have to be quite um, have a gentle touch please have a gentle touch so I'm just being asked a question there by one of the students 
So again here you can see where I've dropped that water in, I've got dark and then it's made a lovely texture of white um, and up close that looks absolutely brilliant where I've dropped the water in. It gives that beautiful natural magical break in the pigment that you can't get with any other medium and I've got a very cool colour there and I've got the very warm purple in the lower part of the petal, that purple petal. So on to the next uh, flower, which I have painted, or well, I've sorry, I've, I've drawn all these petals in. So I'm just using pure aureole and yellow uh, here. And then I'm going to drop in some permanent rose to that. And this petal I'm going to actually let mix on the paper. So I've painted the whole petal with water and then just drop the pigment in. So you can make it very easy for yourself. You don't even have to do a lot of painting. So on the right hand side there you can see the actual flower. So you can see how it's got those wonderful colours and how those petals where they fade down to where they emerge from the flower head they're almost white with just a touch of bright um, bitter yellow in them just gorgeous so I'm going to start on the next petal and you can see how with the reflected light on those petals they have got areas of almost white paper where the light is uh, hitting that very reflective surface of the crinkled petals and then you've got um, quite dark tones where it's not getting as much light and you can still see those warm and cool colors in the head of the flower where it's got pink and like a warm orangey pink and it's quite light underneath where you've got reflected light shining up under the main head of the flower. So it does pay to look really closely at whatever you're painting. Uh, flowers, scenery, buildings, look for the shadows, look for where the light is coming from. And most of all, most importantly, is look for the tones on the Bird of Paradise. You've got some very light tones and you've got very dark. So if you want your flowers to really sing, you've got to have that lovely mix, the combination of light and dark and warm and cool. So I usually paint the main petals, the ones that are closest to me, first and then you can always tuck the others in behind. Um, I guess that's how I generally paint. A touch more permanent rose with the aureole and yellow. Again it will give me that beautiful orange. I could use cadmium orange here or I've got a very warm uh, cadmium yellow orange in my paint box there, my palette, but that um, cadmium colours 
um, almost seem to have a very chalky look to them. They are perfect for painting over any area that you don't want the background colour to show through. But here I want the back I want the white of the paper to glow through. And that's what watercolour relies on. They re, we rely on the paper, the white of the paper to glow through. So I'm going to actually take that yellow orange cadmium out of my paint box and replace that with the quinacridone red that I've just bought. And just keep that as a tube because I don't use it very often, but when I do it's um, a must. You just might have a, a spot of orange or um, like with the cad red, a spot of cad red that you need that nothing else will take the place of and I find that that's the time that I really use it and really need it. So again here we go with that one of those beautiful blue stamens or flowers. I'm not quite sure if they're a stamen or a petal but they have the most wonderful colours and they're so bright. I just love them. So because it's a very structural, just pretty sharp, pointy petal, to avoid that looking like it's just been stamped on the paper, you have to have tonal variation and you need to have temperature variation. So you need warm and cool as well in that mix of paint to make up the petal and you have to wait until it's just the right time don't put your water in if you want to dilute that pigment too soon otherwise it will just flood and it'll go all the same color just wait until it's drying a little bit and then drop some in just as the shine's going off the paper and you'll be able to see that the water actually pushes the pigment apart, it pushes it over the surface of the paper. And you can see on the stem to the right how I've dropped water in on that stem and see how I've got that lovely cauliflower. It's um, separated the pigment on the paper and I think it looks, looks brilliant. I love that look. So again painting the main head of the flower. I'm putting in the permanent rose first. You can see how where I've dropped the water in um, the pet the orange petals on the left hand side just above the head of this flower. See how the water's blossomed up into the orange so it goes from the very very pale to the dark that's what you need to try and achieve that look and you'll add magic to your painting so keep looking back at your image um, or if you're lucky enough to have um, bird of paradise growing in your garden or if you can beg some or borrow some from a friend or a neighbor when, and you've got them they last for probably a week in water so you've got plenty of time to paint them keep referring back to the natural flower it's always best to paint from life if you possibly can it will show you things about the object or the flower the subject that you cannot possibly see if you're painting from a photograph. You know, photographs just don't cut the mustard, they just um, are way too flat and the camera does lie, it flattens everything out. But if you haven't got a flower to paint from, um, please feel free to do a photo um, screenshot of the one at the start of this video and use that one. Again just dragging that dark down with the tip of my brush and that's pretty dark that 
one. I do want it darker than the one in front of it, the original flower, because um, if it's not, it will, it will look like a, a dominant flower. And because it's behind the original one, I don't want that to look like a dominant flower. Somebody there was just asking me a question as I'm actually painting this during class. So now just adding the stem. I'm dropping in some purple just to darken up that green. And you can see in the head of the flower, because I haven't stretched or stretched my paper, there are some buckles that have appeared and it has um, got some dips in the paper. Leave those, they're fine. If it really bothers you, you can dry your brush off and just hold the very tip of a natural bristle brush into those dark puddles and the brush will actually suck the pigment out. If you touch your brush just to the very top surface of the water, don't push it through as far as See, I'm just lifting off the top of that water and it's just sucking out that very strong pigment. And again, I'll do it here. And what remains there, it's fine. It's a natural flower. It'll dry lighter, so don't worry. And I can do that because it's still very, very wet. Um, if it's dried off, leave it until it's completely 100% dry paper and you can lift it off then. So I'm just tipping up the paper to get that to run back up the stem of the Bird of Paradise. I just want to strengthen that pink there. It's a bit more rose matter and just strengthen that to match the other side that's on the other side of the main stem so that the, the large part of the flower doesn't look disconnected from the front. So again, I can only do this and it, two pigments will merge. The fresh pigment will merge with the rest of the head because my paper is still wet and wet means shiny wet surface on your paper. So if you're lifting your paper up to the light and you can see whether it's, it'll either be dead flat, which is dry, it'll be almost dry, which will be like a matte surface, or it will be shiny wet. All of the head of that flower that I'm painting now is still shiny wet. If I couldn't see shiny surface to the paper, I wouldn't touch it until it was completely dry. Yep, I've got another question being asked there about the undersurface of the bud. So I'm going to now add the glow on the underside of that head of the flower. And again, it's merging beautifully because it's very wet. So now I'm mixing up some more purple to put another purple um, lot of petals in and you can see how the one that I did earlier on the same flower head has faded but that's okay I can always strengthen it with another layer of paint over the first one but if it was um, too pale all of it just wait until the whole lot has completely dried 100% and just touch your brush to it with your paint. 
this one is still damp so if that forms a cauliflower on that I'm really happy with that because it will help push the pigment apart and make it far more interesting. Now I want some of that vivid blue, the Prussian blue, to um, go from, take that petal from being a warm dark to a cool, very pale, cool area of paper. So some aureolan yellow and some more permanent rose, just mixing a nice strong colour. It's going to be quite a dark orange because it's um, behind the main petal of that bird of paradise. So. I'm putting very strong pigment down. So now I'm going to just darken this petal and take it further back, giving it that three-dimensional look. You can also put a dark tip to that. Maybe there's a bit of shadow there. I love using my calligraphy brushes for painting here because they hold so much pigment and they can also hold so much water. So you don't have to keep stopping and recharging your brush. Now you can see how that second flower has dried. And I've been having such a lovely time, I thought I'm going to just keep going. Um, I'm going to, I've put a third flower in, and that's a bit cooler and a bit smaller, because I don't want it to be too dominant. And I'm going to put a big leaf behind this flower at the top. So why? one of the reasons I've chosen to put a, a leaf behind, I want it to go behind that very light section of the main flower because it will have the effect of making the light sections of those petals where they join the head of the bird of paradise to look even lighter and stand out even more because that's going to be the focal point of my painting. I've decided to go for a kind of an A-shaped um, composition so that there'll be lots of detail at the bottom, lots of flowers, lots of stems, lots of petals, but not so much at the top. So where it is at the top, it'll be lightest, brightest, have the most variation in tone, uh, texture and contrast so your eye will be drawn to the top of the painting and hopefully then go around and you'll go back and keep looking at all the different flowers we're just filling in those little tiny sections there some's escaped onto that petal naughty paint so I'm just lifting that off with my brush Just finishing it off down there. I 
and as you can see just on the right of the screen it's quite dark I have got an actual leaf so that I can use that um, as my reference material now one of the things I just love about these paints the Holbein paints is how they lift off so I've used phthalo blue here pressure or Prussian blue I should say um, phthalo blue is the same it's quite staining but on hot pressed uh, paper these pigments will lift almost back to white paper it's incredible how well they lift off just by putting a damp brush onto the paper they will lift off so I just keep going now I have sprayed that leaf the section that I've done so far with just a squirt of water just to speckle that leaf up and make a bit of texture on the paper don't use too much water or it will go all over your beautiful flowers so I'm using a bit of uh, ultramarine here and some quinacridone sorry not quinacridone some cadmium yellow orange because I don't mind if this is opaque this color I want it to really recede back behind these lighter sections of the flowers to the front of it I've got to leave some white there because I'm going to put um, I think another petal is going to go in there I quite quite see the drawing on this side I've got some more of the leaf to paint in and then when I've done that we'll do some interesting things to texture this leaf up and make it look a bit more exciting than you can't just paint in a flat dark green leaf so you can see I've dropped a little bit of water in there and I've strengthened the yellow that was the main stem and just now finishing off painting the leaf joining up those edges Okay, now a damp rigger brush, you can do fabulous things with that. Just drop in, this is CAD yellow orange, Holbein CAD yellow orange. You can add some veins to your leaves, and the leaf underneath is quite, it's damp. It's, um, if you looked at the surface of the paper against the light, it would be a dull yellow. I'm sorry a dull shine it wouldn't be shiny wet it would be just a dull surface so that's perfect to add textural qualities to the painted surface by just adding some paint more pigment and these leaves are very structured very architectural in their shape very strong so yeah, that's a good start to that I can always sprinkle a bit of water onto that I can add a bit more dark at a later stage I could add an edge to the petal uh, an edge to the leaf the leaves have got quite a yellow edge to them but I can do that when it dries off just a little bit more maybe I'll do it now just adding a bit of warmth to that edge it's got a bit messy there okay now on to another leaf and again the same deal I've got phthalo blue quinacridone gold 
and it's very strong pigment, extremely strong, and I've mixed up a lot. A lot of pigment. So a bit more quinacridone gold, a bit more ultramarine this time. A bit more quinacridone gold. It's very strong pigment. You can see how that's faded already and it's way lighter than the other one so I need to probably mix a bit richer colour and then I can always add some water to it. And you can see now in the original leaf how there's some really interesting marks have happened there. Um, how the water has ballooned out just to the right of my brush and it's pushed that pigment apart and the edge that I put and painted on that leaf it's actually bled back up into the leaf under the head of the second flower I painted. You just you can use the tip of your brush to paint like this or you can flatten it out and get loads of pigment like that onto your paper. Calligraphy brushes are sensational to paint with. And this is quite an unusual painting for me because I always have a lot of soft edges in flowers. Um, can't really do it with Bird of Paradise because they are so architectural and just have sharp edges and straight lines everywhere. So I will soften some of the petals off at a later stage, but at this stage, no, they're all sharp edged. Okay, again, some cad yellow orange, the Holbein cad yellow orange. I'll put a bit of aureolin with this and just draw in some veins. So that's the central vein. You can just see that in the corner of the screen. And I'll draw in some veins as well. It's probably a little bit wet at the moment for that. But... It won't matter. I quite like the variation in the tone that's occurred naturally on the painting because it replicates light and shade over the surface of the leaf. Some of that leaf is just a little bit wet for it to work at the moment to push the surface of the paper, the pigment apart and make those little channels. So I'll have to revisit that in a moment when it dries off just a little bit more. So a bit of permanent rose. just restate the edge with a bit of warmth along that leaf and it's still it's actually at the perfect stage the leaf to add this to because some of it is 
a little bit drier than the rest of it so some of it is merging back into the leaf and disappearing and just showing up as green and some is drier some of the edge is drier so I'm getting that lovely pink appearing so that's still a little bit damp there it's not working as clearly as it could so now I'm just going to add a bit more water to there and you can see how that surface is channeling where I've had a damp brush so it might be too strong but just wait because sometimes magic happens and this is a painting it's not a botanical work of art so it's great to have those nuances and tonal variations that you do get with watercolour and a watercolour painting. So I think I'll just put a little bit more yellow into that. Will I put more, won't I? Yeah, I'll put a bit more water there. And just encourage that to bleed out over the surface of the leaf again. Sometimes you just have to sit and wait and just see what happens. Sometimes nothing happens. Other times you can head off a disaster and other times you think, that is just right. It's those lovely magic moments that you have. I'd forgotten a bit of green was supposed to go in there. I'll just restate that. Okay, so let's have a look at that. I think that's all going quite well. So I think I'll do another flower. So where do I put it? So pick up your flower and you can lay it down. You can think maybe I could put it that way. You might turn it, put it down the base of the painting and it will give you a good idea of where to put it. So I think what I'll do, I'll put this one behind the leaf so that it's right at the far distant background of the painting. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm having a ball. I'm just going for it putting far more in than I originally thought I would. Um, I'd forgotten how much I love to paint. Bird of Paradise, I haven't painted them for ages. This is wonderful fun. So it's the same process um, all over again, putting in the first petal, in an underwash with aureole and yellow, leaving it to sit on the paper for a while while you go on and do the next petal, which in this case will be the purple petal or stamen that the flowers produce. Drop more paint there to darken it up. Some water to flow up and push the pigment on the paper around and get some magic happening and all the time I'm painting this I'm continually looking back at my original flower that I've got in my hand I'm sorry I can't I don't have space on the table um, to show you the flower and I haven't worked out yet I know you can do it I don't know how but you can actually have an image of what it is that I'm painting superimposed or embedded into the video. So I'd like to actually have that right where my water pot is because that's not an attractive look. But um, I'll keep you posted. I'll work out how to do that and hopefully you won't have to look at that for too much longer. So doing the next petal.
and drag that yellow down that cool, cold aureole and yellow. Or if you're, you haven't got aureole and yellow, use lemon yellow. It's very, very transparent, um, lifts off easily, and it's a very cool yellow, so it's very easy to warm up with just a dash of permanent rose, rose matter, a little bit of quinacridone red. You can get gorgeous oranges and warm yellows from that. And again, same again, putting in the top edge of um, the head of the flower, which you can just see moving around there on the right-hand side of the screen. I've mixed up quite a strong colour, a little bit cooler for this flower because it's right in the far distant background. And yes, that's very strong, but there'll be quite a lot of shadow over that flower head so I want that to recede and go back into the picture and again because I'm painting on hot pressed paper 300 gram lan aquarelle it just the paint moves beautifully over the surface of the paper um, and it gives you that very soft almost granular look because the surface of the paper is so soft and flat. So all those flower head now all have um, the light to me looks like it's coming up from underneath them and that's how the pigment has moved over the surface of the paper and merged together giving that um, beautiful multicolored look that the heads of Bird of Paradise have. So it's a great idea to constantly change um, the amount of pigment on your brush um, you don't want too much water, you don't want um, not enough water. So probably one of the biggest challenges that you, artists have when they're starting in watercolour is the right amount of pigment at just the right time. And you only learn that through practice. So if you're really keen about your painting, paint as often as you can. Um, hopefully it's every day. Um, you don't even have to paint for a long time every day. When I first started, I would paint. Every afternoon, I'd come home from work, have a cup of tea, um, and just sit there and paint. Sometimes it was only 10 minutes, but that's the beauty of watercolour. You can just pick up your brush and keep going, and if you've got to get up and leave it, you can rinse your brush and walk away and come back tomorrow. You don't have to do it all in one day. And in fact, for this painting, I think this is the second day um, that I've been painting. As I didn't finish it in the classes before. Um, now, I want to put a stem over that leaf and over the stem of the previous flower. And you can see how... Um, this is a one inch flat brush with um, nylon bristles. I think it's a Franchville brush. Um, not expensive. I've had this particular brush for about 20 years. It's brilliant. I still haven't worn it out. And marvellous for taking out lines in um, damp paper, damp paint, uh, reflections on water. And it just gives me the most wonderful uh, smooth way of lifting off colour. I, there's a lot of brands of paint you couldn't lift off uh, a Prussian blue back to that extent. With Holbein you can. It just gives me that seamless look. You can't see where the original stem was or where that original leaf underneath finished. So I can paint another stem across that so it gives me the look of intertwining flowers and leaves 
and petals. So to get to achieve that look, um, I'm using uh, aureole and yellow, quinacridone gold, uh, light and dark tones, and warm and cool tones. So always bear in mind you want that wonderful mix so that it looks realistic, so that it looks like it's got some life in your subject. Okay, so mixing up more paint, I'm still including flowers, I'm putting even more in. I'm absolutely loving painting this artwork. So I've drawn another flower in down the base, I've laid my flower over the top of the painting and thought yes I can squeeze some more petals in down at the base because I think it needed something else down the bottom of the painting to uh, make it a little bit more solid, to make it just a little bit more uh, defin defined down the bottom um, rather than it being up the top of the paper. So that's what I've decided to do. So I'm going to include more petals right down the very bottom at the lower edge of the painting. So it's great fun to rise to the challenge and paint some more petals in. How are you going to design them? What tone you're going to do? What's your composition going to look like? So it's really great fun. I do hope that you're enjoying painting along this exercise with me. So just dragging those edges down toward the head of the flower. Put another spike of blue in there. Very, very dark at this stage. Okay, I've just pulled that pigment down with a damp brush to lighten it. And I'll do the same for that petal. Just bring that down a bit. It doesn't have to be as defined and as clear and sharp as the other flowers because this one's quite away in the background. So that's why I've got the colours a bit cooler and a little bit duller than the other petals. They're not as vibrant. And they don't have to be because they're further back. And again, if you want to fast forward the video, please do. Just turn down the sound or turn off the sound so you don't have me sounding like the chipmunks. Okay. Now this is the head of the flower that I'm going to paint. Again, same steps. Really Bird of Paradise are very straightforward, very simple because they're such a structured flower and it's the same step every time. Paint in the pink. You can either put green or the more of the purple tone here. Bit of permanent rose. A little bit of cobalt to mix that purple, a bit more cobalt, and then 
get that to merge between, like a bridge if you like, between that green and the first stripe of permanent rose, sorry, rose matter. So just continuing the head over to there. Mixing up a little bit more green. A bit of Prussian blue into that with the quinacridone gold. It's funny how the quinacridone gold looks so dark in this video in my paint box, but I assure you it is quinacridone gold. And with uh, Prussian blue it gives you a magical green um, a green that is um, transparent and you can either warm it up or cool it down by adding a bit more um, quinacridone gold if you want it warmer um, you can even drop a bit of raw sienna into it if you want and if you want to make it cooler just add more blue Okay, so now just still continuing on, a little bit more pigment into there. I'll just lift off a little bit of that darkness to add a sparkle of light. And yep, I think that's worked. Happy with that. Adding just a touch of water to a couple of areas in the petals to make some cauliflowers appear. I've, now here I've added some shadows to the painting. I've run shadows across uh, some of the heads of the flowers, some of the stems, some of the petals. But I've decided to add even more flowers to the background. So I'm still painting um, flowers in the background. Um, I think this is... Um, now the fourth painting session that I've had to do this. So some cobalt blue mixed with my rose matter and just touch the edge of the purple to the edge of the pink and let it merge together. Don't overlap it too much or you'll lose that lovely pink edge. And then hit it with the dark green, which is made from, again, the Prussian blue and quinacridone gold. So there we go. I've added water. To that mix of the green so it will be a lighter green for the underside of that flower head and added a little bit of quinacridone gold to give it a bit of reflected light underneath and it's at just the right stage of uh, dampness wetness on the paper it's still quite wet it's shiny wet so that those colors will merge on the paper now I've just put some quinacridone gold and some aureolan yellow together for another touch of reflected light underneath there. So I'm using ultramarine blue and quinacridone gold. I've mixed up some more green. Yeah, it needs a bit more dark there. Perfect. 
for that section. It's kind of escaping on me a little bit so just again touching my brush the t very very tip of the brush to the surface of that water I don't want that pooling one side of the point of the bird of paradise and not on the other So I'm starting here uh, again painting that purple's petal with some very dark Prussian blue and some warm purple and getting the two to merge together. If you want them a little bit lighter or a little bit darker you can add some more warmth to the very cool blue or when it's just starting to dry a touch of water. So I'll get my very fine favourite rigger brush and I've decided to do a lovely straight line with that. It's got kind of a little, um, I don't know what you'd call it, there's a straight section of something emerging from that petal which I think just looks sensational with the rest of the colours. So it's like a little long thin line that's has popped out of the end of the petal. I suppose it's a stamen, I'm not quite sure. So I want some quite cool yellow there for the base of the next petal. So now I'm mixing some permanent, well no that's quinacridone red with that. Now I'm going to drop a bit more yellow into that because this is like a petal that hasn't quite emerged from the head of the flower yet so it's still connected it hasn't popped right out so it's very bright and I think when you're painting it's a good art practice don't um, dip your loaded brush back into your paints try and keep your paint boxes quite clean like your pigment try and keep them quite clean um, you can put yellow into say a very dark color but you certainly couldn't dip a brush with Prussian blue back into your aureole and yellow for example or you will end up with polluted color try and keep them as clean as you can and it makes your paint far more usable And one of the other things you can see now in the stem and the head of the flowers are the broken colour. You can see how that now it's completely dried. You've got variations of temperature, warm and cool. You've got light and dark and the surface of the paper is broken up with shadows and warm colour. And you've got um, lots of interesting 
marks on the paper that go to make it look more realistic without it looking necessarily botanical. I like to think of this as a contemporary abstract, a contemporary painting of Bird of Paradise, not a botanical painting. Botanicals are very, very exact and are quite different in their approach to um, presenting a painting. I like a lot more freedom. I like the ability to be able to um, paint a bit more expressively. Um, I'm too impatient to paint a botanical painting. So just adding some quinacridone. Hmm, no, I think burnt sienna. I just added some burnt sienna to that. A bit of raw sienna because I don't necessarily need the base of this flower head to be vibrant or colourful as the others because it's in deep shadow. So I'm almost at the end of this painting. I think I'll probably very shortly flick to the end so that you can see the finished painting and you'll see the rest of it painted. So I've still got that area up there to finish while the section down the bottom dries. I've got shadows, a lot more shadows to fill in and some more petals to paint. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much for um, enjoying. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you'd like to watch some more videos free of charge, when you subscribe, you are notified um, that you have a new subscription. They're free of charge. Um, love to have you paint along um, and enjoy watercolour. I think YouTube is fantastic for bringing art to everybody who wants to paint. So I've made that quite dark, a bit of alizarin crimson and then I'll just touch some aureole and yellow to that and get it to bleed down into that uppermost edge of the head of the flower. Still a bit damp up there, I'll have to come back to that. Now here you can see the final painting. Um, you can see how I've added more flowers. I've finished off the one that was still too light before. I've added shadows across them. I've even put another flower in the top left hand section. So I've got very strong diagonal, a very um, A-shaped composition. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much.
Join me soon. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Thanks for watching.